Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. A general reminder for those who do not know, MIC is having a one year anniversary event where Bao is going to be trading live in front of our members. It's coming up August 17th. Mark your calendars. As an added benefit for our members, the event is 100% and exclusively free for annual and lifetime members. While lifetime, on top of that, get extra coaching before the event and guaranteed front row seating. While most charge for these events, we show our support by making it, again, free for annual and lifetime members. If you are interested in signing up for this event, DM TBradley90 in MIC Slack chat and or email myself at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. Today, we have a very special video for you guys as I do my weekly new member orientation video every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And today, this week is going to be week two of a recorded Q&A at the end. It's, a, it's an hour long and it's full of a lot of information. So enjoy. All right, guys. So now we can just kind of start the Q&A. If you guys have any questions, thanks for showing up. Thanks for participating. Write any questions down right here. And we can just, we can start talking about anything you want, like topics, hard stops, you know, risk management, uh, tickers that move today. We can talk about anything that you guys want. Do you guys have any kind of topics that you want to talk about? Does anybody have any questions? Just write them out and uh, let's flush them out. How'd you guys trade today? That's, that's always kind of my opener. Like who did well today? Who didn't do well? And let's flush out why. Yeah, BISL, man. This is this is the 2 p.m. Easter, Eastern Standard Time. Just break down, man. This is this is what we look for, man. This is a total strategy. The end of day give back, man. When a stock has been up over VWAP all day, it finally cracks at around um, 11 my time too. It's it's awesome, man. Um, is there a cap on the amount of people that join MIC? I love the small net community here. You know what, Midwest? It's a here's the thing, man. We were gonna start MIC with a cap. We thought maybe 200 traders tops, maybe three. But what we realized is, you know, in the beginning, we were like, are we going to crowd trades? Like, we don't want to do that. Like, obviously, we don't do alerts in MIC, but we were we were a little bit nervous on, like, how it would affect the market. So after we realized it doesn't really affect anything at all, and it's and, and when it's open to the public, like, the more the better. So we we originally had an idea for a cap, but now we just don't, man, because, you know, at 200, we were like, shoot, is 400 going to be okay? And it is, man. And here we are, 900 plus, and it's it's very much okay. So we're just going to keep it going, man. So many people are learning. We see so many freaking traders with such great testimonials and such great stories. We're like, why would we limit the cap, man? Why would we limit the learning to, to people that can really get benefit out of this? So that was kind of the whole idea of originally having a cap and just abolishing it is, is that we are like, I, I, the patterns are still working. Everything's still working. We've got a ton of people in MIC. So let's, let's keep the flow, man. Let's keep the flow. So uh, no cap, buddy. No cap. <laughs> As uh, Migos would say, no cap. Uh, Landis, when you put on a stop limit order, how do you prevent from not getting filled in your trigger price getting skipped over? Um, oh, market order, buddy. So if you are doing limit, that's that you, you just, you're just leaving it up to fate. Market order, so here's the difference. With a stop order, we recommend hard stops every single day. Now there's a difference though, you gotta be prepared because you cannot set a market limit and walk, oh, what's up Edson, hey buddy. You cannot set a market limit and walk away comfortably. I've walked away from those and it ripped my face off in every, oh my God, look at VISL breakdown. Dude, yeah, I gave this real time on this webinar, man. That confirmation through VWAP, you can short, set a hard stop just above the death candle, literally walk away. Dude, 200 shares could have made you a ton of money if you would have just had fantasy covers down here at like four, swing this thing. That's crazy, bro. This is totally breaking down. And I said under five, it's game over, man. Uh, nice. Uh, so the whole point is, guys, is market orders, market orders, market orders on a, on a hard stop. Because look, you're going to have slippage. It's going to happen. Sometimes you're going to lose a lot more than you want, but you're guaranteed to stay safe and get the fuck out. When you do a, li a market limit, it's, it's up to, dude, I don't know how, sometimes you just don't get filled, man. And it's the sad truth. And traders don't have a, basically it's like not having a stop on. 
yeah, thank you, Edson, for clearing that up. What up, buddy? Smoothie buddy. Uh, Midwest, also, can you go over how to get the report card and monthly progress chart again? Oh, yeah, yeah, no problem, buddy. So um, I'm trying to... I'm trying to remember where that was. Uh, daily report card right here. Download uh, your report card and your PL calendar right there. So just click those downloadable contents. Um, let's go back to new member. You will not get a good fill, but better than the, yes, yes. You will not get your you you will not get get your guaranteed fill every time with a market stock. You're just not going to. But guess what? I would much rather pay slippage then um you know take the mother of all losses one day which i never take anymore and i never take massive losses because i always got a hard stop in place so are you guys protecting yourself or are you kind of being risky i will protect myself every time i'm a conservative guy by nature i'm going to make sure that i'm protected and uh and staying in this game man here i am six years later i plan to be here for a very long time like thou um, and you know, me and Alex do hard stops, market stops every single trade now. And, and I cannot stress the importance of it and the relief from emotions more. So definitely do it, do it too, guys, but feel it out, you know, feel it out. You might be the guy that masters market limits or, um, yeah, yeah. Stop limits. Hopefully that's clear. Yeah, buddy, anytime. Midwest, what's up, buddy? Of course, man. Love the webinar. Second time watching this new member webinar. Still learning from it. Love the community. Awesome, dude. Thanks for the kind words, man. Uh, we Look, bro, we are here to help you, man. Here's the thing. We, I, I'm all, I've always been the believer of, you know, when people ask, like, hey, guys, why'd you start MIC? You know, you know, Val was, Val was teaching for free for literally, like, over a decade, man. And he's still got a ton of hate. He's still got a ton of trolls. And Everybody was like, now you're charging. He's like, yeah, you know what? Anybody who's really good at something, if you can still provide value, yeah, we're going to charge for it. But here's the thing. When you charge money and when you guys pay us, you know, $180 or $179 a month to teach you, dude, we're going to fucking teach you. We're going to be here. We're going to take you by the hand if you need. We are going to make sure that you guys have access to all the things we learn. We're not going to phone this in. We're not going to have to ask. You guys are paying us to keep you safe to teach you great strategies and to provide a sense of community around you. And that's what we, that's what we pride ourselves on doing. So Midwest, thank you, buddy. I'm so glad that you're happy, man. I hope that every member is happy and we're going to continue just, just breaking our backs, man, to make sure there's enough content to make sure that there's everything out there for you guys. And Brittany's right. And Brittany's right. It filters out the people who aren't serious. You know, if you open up, you know, Bow ran a free chat. I don't know if you guys know this, but Bow back when he lived in uh, New York city, he, um, God, back when, um, I think it was the first like four years into his training, man, he opened and had the biggest free chat that all of New York City like ever saw in the day trading community, dude. It was humongous. And guess what? I mean, there was a lot of riffraff in the chat and it wasn't supportive and it wasn't positive like MIC. Because here's the thing, man. MIC is not a chat room, dude. It's a country club. It's a freaking community. It's a it's a, you know, those communities, like those country clubs where you got golf, you got tennis, you got a resort, you got a spa and, and, and you got a snack bar, you got a, you got a restaurant, you got a golf shop and everybody's mingling and getting to know each other. And it's like, Hey, Bob's a contractor, you know, Ted's a freaking a golf instructor. I need, I can, you know, I can parlay that by helping him with this and he can help me with that. It's dude, it's really about like, people man it's not even about trading yeah it's about trading we're going to teach you trading all day but dude it's about the people man we just got great upstanding people in this community and that is why we go to all the boot camps and uh and fly around the world and dude we don't make money on those boot camps they cost us a frick ton of money but guess what it does it changes the game up and we get to meet people and and you know we get to shake your hands and and hopefully make you better and motivate people motivate motivate and that's what's important man so so much MIC is just passing the elevator back down. So I think we just covered stops in general. <laughs> uh, what, what else do you guys want to talk about? Any, any other specific questions today, guys? Like, did you have, um, did anybody have any trouble on a certain ticker or something? Did you guys, uh, did you guys nail the backside and, and, uh, of, uh, what was it? Uh, VLRX, man, that was easy one this morning on that VWAP, that VWAP push, man, that was nice. Um, Yuma just didn't bounce up enough. I wanted the red to green line. I wanted 388 into like scale from like maybe 380 into like 410. I would have killed for that. It didn't happen. So I didn't get any of that. 
Um, again, if you did get the locates on BISL, man, that would have been fantastic on this on this last uh, VWAP break, like I said, going into an end of day 2 p.m. give back, which we teach. Um, let's see, OBLN after the death candle, you know, under that shoot down under VWAP, you could have gotten a couple cents, but don't, you know, it, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I should probably start a topic. So, guys, when it comes to shorting, here's the thing. I've been a short seller for the last – um, exclusively for like the last three years. And I, I never look back. I just, I just, it resonates with me just wholeheartedly. My whole, my whole life is to, you know, when I was a kid, I was just a tinker, you know, the, the tailor. I was like, my parents or my friends would be like, dude, you just want to know how things work. And you're always that guy who's like trying to find something wrong in why it works. Like, like the meaning of existence or aliens or any, any of that bullshit. Right. But the whole point is like, that's why I am a short seller. I go like, okay, like what is wrong here? Now I have an edge. Now I have an advantage. You know what I mean? So you can find that like, that little, that little puzzle where you're like, ah, I got you. I got you. You know, the cogs aren't working. They're not aligned. This, this engine, it's low on oil. You know what I mean? So it's like short the, short the Honda Civic. Uh, all I'm saying is, is like, that's how my mind works. I'm definitely a realist. I'm definitely a guy who goes, um, what's wrong here? I'm going to find a solution. And that's kind of what shorting is. And, and the thing about shorting is because I digress a little bit. The thing about shorting is everybody wants to short just because it's up and everybody wants to short just because it's backside. These are two major facades when it comes to shorting. You do not short things that are just up. You have to have backside in, but then you have to have just because backside's in doesn't mean shit. You need meat. You need meat on the bone. You need enough meat to come back down and give you a move in its backside. Not every death line is a short, guys. And let me make that very clear. While death line is one of our major short strategies, not every death line is a short. And, and um, DLRX was a perfect example of that today. Kind of broke the death line maybe by, by one or two cents, but it has no meat to come down really. I just don't see much of a move here. So you can hit a pop to VWAP and maybe get a nail and bail like I did, but there's not much to it, guys. So when it comes to shorting, you do want backside, but you want backside with like a slide. You need like a slide to come down. You need meat. You need a journey back down. So don't just short because it looks good. Short because the criteria is not only there, it is in backside. There's meat on the bone and there's really no catalyst. There's a reason to look for this stock, you know, you're opening the hood, you're looking at the engine and you go, oh, it's low on oil. Oh, it's got 200,000 miles. Oh, it's a uh, transmission. Like the, the belt's kind of broken half here. Short this engine. You know what I mean? Like that's the whole point of shorting. It's got to kind of have a culmination of everything. It's got to have everything. And when it comes to longing, you know, that's, that's a whole different story in itself, but that's, that's kind of my views on shorting. So uh, I see too many traders just want to short everything that's in quote unquote backside, but Hey, does the backside have a move in it? Ask yourself that. Um, all right, uh, Midwest, question on the Philly. Uh, is the whole meetup for annual and lifetime members or is it just live trading Monday for annual and lifetime? So check, this is a great question. Um, I, Alex answered this better than I could, but I, he, to my understanding of the days that are not the main event, buddy, here's what's happening. Um, we are going to have, I'm pretty sure we're gonna have, we're, everybody's available at least one day. So even monthlies can fly out or if you're local, come to, I, th I think we're going to go to a bar. We've got someplace planned. I got to, I got to double check with Alex. Um, I still got to book my flight. Oh my God. I've been so late on this uh, Philly trip, but we are all going to meet up and have the time of our lives at like a social setting. Then we're going to have a rest day. So I think the 17th is the social setting where literally everybody can come uh, monthlies, even non members. I think um, just kind of meet, see what we're all about. Um, we're going to have a rest day um, because Bao needs a rest day after a huge night of drinking, man. We're, we're probably going to get together, have a lot of shots, um, shake a lot of hands, be tired. We're going to have a rest day. And then Monday, um, so Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, Monday, we're going to go balls to the walls, man, live trading. Um, I'm going to probably film the whole event. Hopefully I can live trade and film at the same time <laughs> somehow. But um, if I don't, then I'll, I'll film it for you guys so you guys can watch the playback, an annual and lifetime members, if you didn't make it out. And, um, yeah, so I, I'm, that's, that's pretty much that, man. But it's going to be insane. It's going to be so much fun. Uh, TRXC kind of looked like a first bounce play to me, but doesn't look like it's working. Any thoughts on what I'm missing? I was looking at the 160 level. 
let me pull this up on my phone. I'm a little bit mobile right now. This desktop that I'm using, I can't pull up charts. So let me, let me pull it up real quick so I can see what you're talking about, buddy. I did not look at TRXC today. Oh, wow. It just kind of started running not too long ago, huh? Wow. What the hell is this? They have midday news. This looks like a midday news play. Soars 40% off halt to sell parts, fall in $47 million deal. Uh, that news was at 11. Yeah, you know, here's the thing, man. I'm not a big fan. I'm not. Here's the thing. I do not like plays that are into the close. So, George, you know, it, I wouldn't first bounce something like this. I wouldn't even short something like this. And it totally looks like it's breaking down. The best odds for success are the morning. You don't want to like, this is the end of the day, man. You're not really looking for major plays to short end of day. And like the worst thing you can do is open up a short in like the last 40 minutes of the day and then just get squeezed because, you know, maybe it was midday news like TRXC seemed to just do. And you just want to play safe, man. Retail is going to be the, um, the culprit in the first couple hours of the day. People are, haven't gone to work yet. It's going to be human trading against humans, especially in these small caps. But after the first hour, you know, a ton of algorithms come in, a ton of, a ton of big money can come in. Um, I don't like to play against a, bunch of, uh, against a bunch of computers, so that's kind of what tends to happen. But midday news, I have a personal rule of just never playing it because it's just, uh, it's just, it's got a, it's a, there's, I'm, I make very rare exceptions, but something like TRXC, this big old move, this random, random ass move right now with all this volume coming in, I don't know, man. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it either direction. I got to be honest. Um, how do I decide whether to start focusing long or short? I consistently flip flop between the two. So this is a case of, um, let's see what Edson said. So he said, take a look at your track record and see what percentage of your trading is long and short and see each of your better and have a bigger uh, win percentage. Uh, of course, that doesn't mean only play one side. Traders just should have no bias. I agree with this. I agree with this. I've got a thing to add, but I love this. So Edson's right, man. You know, I'm a big um, conveyor of only do what works for you, bro. So here's the thing. I want jo uh, Jody, or um, if you're a woman, then I apologize. But uh, Jody, whether you're, you know, just member Jody. Jody, um, if you are trying to kind of flip flop and you're, you know, you're long, you're short, you're long, you're short. Here's what you need to do. You need to find a strategy that resonates with you. And it might be short bias. It might be long bias. It doesn't matter, but it is about flushing out that one comfort zone and mastering one first. Don't try to nail both sides immediately, especially if you're a new trader, trying to find consistency, trying to find profitability. If you're new, I recommend doing the first bounce only. Learn longs first, because then you know how stocks move. You can really understand range. I, I recommend every new trader go long first. I, I did it for the first two years. I didn't place a short until year three. And now I, I've never looked back, but I learned everything I needed to for longs first. And I did the first bounce for the first two years and actually was pretty good at it. So if that's for you, if it's not, then try the death line and try a whole week of that and see if it fits your comfort zone. And, and you're only waiting for backside. You're only waiting for death line. If that's your thing and, and, and say both don't work for you, then you got to start really just, and all this should be done on back testing paper money. This should not be real money. You're not there yet. You're trying to find your identity in this game. So, you know, um, whatever it is, but you've got to nail something down commit to that, you know, be a master of one, not a jack of all trades, and then move on when you're like, wow, you know, it's starting to get boring how consistent I am at deadlines, or it's starting to get boring how consistent I am at first bounce. Like I want to expand my horizons and build my repertoire, so to speak. That's how you do it. One step at a time. Uh, FX Edge, uh, Vizzle, where, the de where, is the, uh, where was the deadline once, once the VWAP broke? Here's the thing. The death line really is a clean, clean break of five. Not like just a trickle down under. You want the five-minute close under five. But here's the thing. I like to call the, the – so if you notice, when a stock consolidates all day, like on and close to VWAP like it did, it puts in a neckline. And the neckline was just under VWAP. It correlated to that one support at $6 or 604, whatever it is you can see. If you, I go by whole numbers. So if it's really close, I'm going to go by whole numbers. So six, that's a neckline snap. So if it neckline snaps right there, I'm hitting the next pop. And I wait for that all day. But honestly, 
um, FX Edge, I'm waiting just for the confirmation, the VWAP slam. Like I would have, if I was trading right now, because I'm done for the day, I'm even locked out. I would have, I would have hit the VWAP slam, and that's what I wait for. That's my personal. That's T. Bradley '90s confirmation. That might not be your confirmation. It might be. You might wait for the neckline snap. But I am always willing to go on a death line, or a, I'm sorry, a death candle um, that slams through VWAP and then put a hard stop at the top of the death candle or just above to give myself a bit of a fudge factor for um, you know a little bit of what the situation is. I'm all about hard stops and I'm all about giving myself at least a wide enough range, sized appropriately wide enough range to be wrong first because we're never just right. I like to scale. I would have, so here's what I would have done. This is what I do. That death candle that happened right before it started really descending, you know, on the next leg and everything, that death candle slammed through VWAP on Vizzle. Here's what I do. I short on that pop immediately and I set a hard stop right above the death candle and that's my strategy for that. Boom. Walk away. Walk away. Uh, FX says, another question, is the, backs, um, is the backside required death line snap or backside doesn't need to have a death line? Here's the thing about backside because a lot of traders are like, what is backside technically, right? Backside is not one answer. I mean, it is, look, if it's the simple one answer, it's that there's so many bagged longs and there's so much overhead that backside in that any pop is going to be a relief pop for selling pressure. But backside is not exactly just a one sentence answer, right? Like backside could be under VWAP. It's a break of trend. It could be under a, a major neckline snap. You know, true backside on this is under five. That's my opinion. You know, there's some traders that would say backside's already in. I don't believe in that bullshit. This is still, there's a lot of longs in control still. The majority of like what is backside or what is frontside, bro, is simply put what side is in control. And right now, Vizzle, it's a 50-50. This line can totally save it five. This could rip back, fuck you candle to shorts over VWAP and go to eight, go to nine, I have no idea. This is why MIC is real traders, real people. I don't know what this is gonna do, bro, but I do know that I will hit a death candle slam, nail and bail, cover, make my money, do it again each day and out, out and that's my strategy as a trader or hip hop. So what I like to call true backside though, true backside is something like Yuma and something like BLRX today. Longs are completely bailed pre-market. They're not in control. Shorts are in control. And then each pop is just consecutively lower and lower like a bouncing ball. And each pop, little pop in the open is going to be a relief pop into selling pressure. And then it's going to fade off. Especially if a pumper gets involved, then you have a lot of um, chat room longs associated with the stock. And then they eventually have to unwind causing a fade. Not just a drop, but then a fade all day. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, S Jim, Lifetime, what's up, buddy? Hey, cool, man. I love this. If you guys are Lifetime, dude, put it in your handle. I love that. I'd love to see who's uh, who's um, who's a Lifetime member. What's up, buddy? Tosh, what was your trade on BLRX and what made you think it would not ramp like all the other reverse splits with PRs recently? You know, here's what I did, man. It, it, here's the thing. I get in every trade and set a hard stop. So I'm not even overthinking it. I loved the entry of where I got and I, and I just set a hard stop. So I'm not trying to put too much thought in a like, you know, like, oh my gosh, will it ramp on me, blah, blah, blah. I'm always prepared for that. So it's not like I'm scared or anything or like, oh my gosh, if it ramps here, what do I do, what do I do? That's all pre-planned. So I scale up to a certain point, set a hard stop, and now my overthinking or thinking of any kind is gone. Walk away. So I shorted today. If the, I was willing to risk from four to um, the line was what it go up to. My cursor stops it. I was willing to go up to 425. Um, I was willing to scale from four to 425, maybe 430 at the maximum, but I don't know, probably about just 25 cents. So I started scaling at four um, or just under, I think I hit like 397, like right there at VWAP because I knew it would probably stuff at VWAP, it did. And then boom, it faded off. So. You know, backside was kind of in, longs were definitely in trouble um, from the morning, and I just knew that longs were kind of screaming, and the attention was not there. It didn't have the volume that, you know, CEI had, and, um, and Vizzle was doing, you know, these were taking a lot of attention. So that was just kind of my thought process, man, is if it's already failing this much pre-market and everything, I'm just, dude, I'm just, I'm not worried. 
backsides in, bro. Backsides in. I wish to God Yuma, which was total backside, death pre-market. I wish that jumped up to the red to green line. That would have been a smoke show. Um, that would have been an amazing trade. Let's see if uh, let's see if Bizzle can like very confidently um, break the death line right now at, at five, man. I want to see like a like a five just freaking break, man. Like a solid break to like four sixty. Five minute candle closes under, and then and then I just have no I just have no hope in any longs, man. Hopefully that's clear. Uh, FX Edge. It seems a gap up pre market and rejection before open trading below view up is a good setup on any bounce. If 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 again FX Edge. If there's enough longs that are in trouble, again, what side is winning? Are the longs in control or are the shorts in control? How much overhead is it going to create the selling pressure that you need so that that bounce in the VWAP is going to sell off? Is it a liquid and then a pumper can get a hold of it? Then you can't do that. You see what I'm saying? If it's not conform to the chart and like, you know, some random pumper gets involved, dude, this thing, they could send it through the roof over pre-market high a day in a snap and a blink. So is there enough volume to unwind the stuck longs and that's always the question so it's not always just about a pattern it's about it's about statistics and information criteria and a pattern uh all objectively um uh how do we know floater or volume um how do you how do you know the volume or float uh well you can just go to finvis for the float man and the filing that's that's pretty simple so here um one sec Finviz stock screener. Uh, to do like what are we talking about? Vizzle. Yep, all your information, man. All your information. Shares float, and then do your due diligence on that. Pay attention to the insider institution. Oh, so many ads on Finviz. Pay attention to the uh, institution own um, insider ownership. Um, you can deduct and things like that, man. Things like that. There's just so much to know, and then go into the filings to really to really uh, make sure. And then the volume is on any platform. So any trading platform that you're doing, buddy, whether it's DOS, TOS, I mean, it's gonna show volume. You just gotta put it on somewhere. Uh, how do you know if the longs or shorts are in control? By the pattern, brother, by the pattern. So Clement, what's up, buddy? So for uh, VLRX, if the if the move started at what, 290-ish and it goes up to five pre-market and the thing is opening up at three. What do you think? And you think longs are in control? Hell no. Vizzle is opening. So if Vizzle is up pre-market from 160 and it's got a pre-market high of 722 and the stock is opening up near 670 or seven, bro, that the longs are in control. There's no backside. There's no lower highs. Higher, low, higher, low, higher, low, front side, Lower high, lower high, bouncing ball descending down a staircase, backside, overhead. The you know the think of think of the guy just fell down the stairs, literally, down each step, and and then you know one step is just going to obliterate him at the end. I hope that's clear. Uh, how do we know Long's lost control? I mean, and make sure it is not manipulated with pumps. Um, well, sometimes you want it manipulated with pumps because here's the thing: like if uh, if a chat room got a hold of it and there's a bunch of stuck longs, well, that's a beautiful thing because now for a short, exactly, you know, specifically because once it breaks the death line, all those longs are in trouble. So you're overthinking this, brother. Don't worry about this. Just just it's in the patterns. Just don't overthink this too much. And like I said. Um, if you play liquid stocks, you don't even have to give too much thought up into this. You know what I mean? Just play your patterns, play your confirmations. Uh, hi, Tosh. Thanks for answering my question. Unfortunately, I lost audio and only caught a small part of it. Where will I be? Oh, this is all recorded, buddy, or, or Jody. Uh, this is all recorded. And oh, you are a girl. Hi. <laughs> um, it's all recorded and will be on YouTube um, in the next couple of days. So you'll be able to watch this whole thing back if you want. But um, I can't even remember our question, but it's all recorded. You'll have it. Uh, Basem, what's up, buddy? Uh, when a stock does a stock split, how does the stock rise up? Is it the next day? The shares just at a higher price. Yeah, yeah. So it's the next day, man. If you take a look at CEI and that price action, it's just a steady line. And then there's there's big gap. That's that's all you got to know. I don't, I don't even touch reverse splits, man. Like literally, like you can just see it on the pattern. It's a straight line. Then there's a big air pocket and it's up what looks like 
you know, like five or seven dollars. So anytime I see that, I'm running for the hills. I don't touch reverse splits, man. They're, they, it makes them extremely low floats and they're just annoying as hell on earth. They're annoying as hell on earth. I hate reverse. I, I don't pay attention to reverse splits ever, ever. They're just so manipulated. Pumpers get a hold of them. Uh, CEI was one yesterday and Dow took a big hit and uh, I stayed safe only because it's on my rule list. I, I don't trade those. Screw that, man. Screw that. S. Jim, will all those micro floats reverse splits uh, flying recently? If it doesn't have thought of learning longs after <laughs> you would think, buddy, you would think. Apparently, I'm just a masochist who leaves a lot of money on the table, who leaves a lot of dead wood, who leaves a lot of. Uh... <laughs> I don't like longing, man. I just, it's not my comfort zone, bro. It's like, it's like when you were a kid, man. It's like, were you a bike kid or did you like scooters, right? And I just love scooters, man. They're just fucking easy, bro. You can flip curb, do all this shit, bikes, man. I fell on a bike, you know? I don't know. Your bike is too big. It's clunky. You run into shit. Uh, I don't know, man. It's just preferences, comfort comfort zone. But if you are into, uh, if you are into longs, then yeah, I mean, that there's a big strategy in waiting for the zombie hour and looking for these things that are super you know, still strong and with the volumes there, the demand is there and, and the plays there, man, that's as simple as that. Everything about this game is just identity. Everything about this game is just finding your comfort zone, what you like and your identity in it. Yeah. But Sam, anytime, man, I'll answer all your questions. Uh, how many days after can a low hanging fruit apply to a stock that is gapped up strong the first day? That's a great question. So, I, I'll tell you what I do. I only pay attention to day one through three. After day one through three, it's kind of a shit show. Um, because here's the thing. Day one is really meant for longs. It's just meant for it. Like on a general basis when trading, day one is meant for longs. Day two is made for short. And day three can if you play the levels right. Because here's what happens on day two. A lot of the selling pressure and a lot of the shorts have attacked day two. And sometimes it recycles out all the selling pressure day two and then day three, it can rip to, you know, even the highs of the first day sometimes like, or it can just bleed off if it keeps breaking down like it does on day two, but be careful because day three day, I only like trading day one through two. I will trade day one through three, but um, I just, after day three, man, I don't look at it anymore. It's not on my radar unless there's a very rare exception unless it's like day five or six or seven. It's been dead for a while and a pumper gets it up for no reason. And I'm shorting into pivot lines that are already previously drawn from the first day one through three that it had failed. So that's very key, Basem, is you want to pay attention to why is the stock moving, brother? Why is it moving? Oh, F sell today. Great, great, great example. It's a great example. Yes, absolutely. Guys, go take a look at that when you have a chance. That was a great example. Dude, after day, after day two, man, these things can really be a headache, bro. These things can really be a headache, man. So, you know, I, like I said, guys, I'm a very conservative trader. You know, I show up, I try to make my whatever it is, you know, three to 700 bucks a day try to do that jam. Um, I'm not, I'm not the guy using 20, 50,000 shares. I like a maximum of 7,000 shares, try to get on, um, you know, four to seven in that range, four to five. And it doesn't, it, you just show up and hit base hits every day, man. And, and you can do this as a career. It's not about using 25,000 shares. It's not about using 50. If that's your comfort zone and that's what you want to do and, and you can accommodate the stress behind that, then yeah, then do it. If you can, if you got the bankroll, you know, the risk management, you know how to account for the slippage. Um, I, I kind of just like showing up every day, doing the, doing the small low hangers, the backsides of the moves, not trying to be a hero base hits add up and you can afford a great life, man. So, you know, it, trading is, it, it, it's fun, dude. It's so different for every single trader out there. And you know, we're real traders and we're going to teach you what we do or, or different personalities, different perspectives. Like that's how I do it. You know, Alex, um, Alex has an appetite for risk. Like I've never seen, I've really just never seen it before. I mean, I, I'm a lot older than Alex. I'm, I'm almost, you know, 30 in a year. And, uh, I just don't have the appetite for risk. I did at his age and, you know, he's 24. He's, uh, 
he 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 has no problem throwing thirty and a hundred thousand shares. That was never me. You know, that was never me. Bao can do it, but even Bao talks about how he's super conservative these days in his older age. And um, you just you just understand your comfort zone, man. And I like to trade very stress free. I don't like I like to enjoy life, man. I don't like to go to bed at night knowing like, oh my god, dude, uh, uh, tomorrow I'm going to use thirty thousand shares in this freaking thing and then worry about every ten cents. It's just not my style. Uh, SGM, would you say someone should focus only on short setups or only longs, choose one side? That's why I see general with uh, good traders and mods. Yes, yes, I'll just break this real quick. Um, Edson's right, man. There's so, many, there's so many ways to make money. You know, lots of ways to make money and lose money in the market, man. There really is. Uh, SGM, so with this, brother, I recommend choosing one side. Like I said earlier, if you are new, master longs, man. Master the first bounce, then gravitate towards shorting short low hangers and deadlines simultaneously because they're kind of the same play uh so you can really attack those two uh, but you know master something first man master something first it's not about trying to be a hero it's not about trying to trade five tickers in a day and half of them were longs and half of them were shorts um it's just about it's just about showing up every day and doing what what you know what works for you and most importantly at the end of the day we're here to make money what makes you money repeat rinse repeat that um Clement, what's up, buddy? Uh, yeah, I do. Absolutely, bro. I look for the VLRXs every day. That is my ideal setup. A stock that is up enough. Um, it has some room to come down. Ideally, I want more room to come down. I didn't think this had a ton of room, but it's still the patterns there. So I hit the relief pop in the, in the morning in the VWAP. That's my strategy, man. If um, you must, same thing. A stock that has just gone up a lot pre-market, died in pre-market, uh, longs are screwed, and they need an out in the open. And boom. Simple, 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 simple. Make your money or death candles or death candles uh, like um, like Bizzle. Death candles, uh, VWAP slams. That is my strategy in a nutshell, pal. True backside and death candles with simultaneous VWAP slams. Yep, no problem, man. Let's see. Uh, Basem, is there a general winning percentage for bounce, low-hanging fruit, death line strategies? I don't know why I capped those. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I, I, I like to speak in bold too sometimes. Um, well, the the winning percentage, bro, is just, uh, it, it's not general. Like you're going to trade different than I trade on those. So the winning percentage is, I mean, you can track this. You can go to trader view. And if you did this for a week, you know, the bounces and track that, you can see your winning percentage. If you did this for a month, you can do that. If you did this for a year, you can do that, whatever you want. But I mean, that's just up to you, bro. I mean, the winning percentages is just up to the trader, not as a general um, not as a general thing, you know, not for like, oh man, you know, the bounce has a 90% win rate for most traders and this has a 20% win rate for most. It's just, it's literally just up to the individual, bro. But that is honestly a great new trader question. I got to say that is a great question. Um, I would like to say that the majority of people being right is a low hanger though. It's just easier. It's just the easiest play there is. It, that's why I stick to it. I like to keep it simple, stupid, kiss. The acronym KISS. Keep it super simple. Keep it simple, stupid. Low hangers, man. Backside's in. Backside's in. This is the easiest play possible. This is another easy one, man. The first bounce. It's really easy. And death line, um, there's a little bit of art to this, but um, this could be the most, this could be the, the big money one. So, um, you know, I, I mean, if I, were, if I had to say, I'd say this is the easiest. That's a toss up, though, man. The first bounce is pretty fucking easy. <laughs> Not that it's easy, it's, it's simple. I need to make that very clear. Trading is not easy, it's simple. It's very simple. You look for one thing and one thing only, and that is a certain setup, and does the setup work or does it not? These are great questions today, guys. These are some of the best questions we've gotten, man. Oh my gosh, I've already been talking for an hour. That's crazy. Thanks for showing up, guys. This is this is, this was awesome, man. I love doing these. I do these every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, and it's just a pleasure, man. It's a pleasure to uh, to help you guys in any way I can, or you know, bring the elevator back down if I can, and and uh, just any of that. 
Uh, I saw from the low hanging fruit videos that the stop is the previous high day. Are you saying that that it has a better winning percentage if I'm able to possibly scale in and out with a stop from pretty much percentage? Last question here. I'm gonna actually write this one out for you, pal, because I want everyone to see this. So great strategy to start with a low hanger on day two. One, now has to have baggies from day one, beaten down, gap up and or um, no gap equals use previous high of day resistance as um, entry, risk, and final stop, scale into two, gap down with a ton of meat to come down still, use red to green line fail and reject. That is what me, Bao, and Alex have been doing for a very long time. A lot of traders, we taught this in MIC, this is a great guide on how to do day twos, guys. So you want to stock, you want to, you want to OBLN, you want to Yuma, you want to BLRX, you want to a Vizzle now. Uh, you want stocks where the longs are kind of losing control. And if this fucker's gapping down, then I'm using the red to green fail and reject for an entry. If it is gapping up, I'm using previous high day. Simple as that. Previous high day or red to green, depending on the gap. Boom. Again, trading is not easy but it can be simplified. Trading can be very simplified on what works each day. Um, what can make the difference between CEI running all day yesterday until end of day, but then Vizzel showing the same day as CEI in the morning and slam back as much as early as 2 p.m.? Oh, bro, yeah, no problem, but Sam. Um, Landis, dude, float? The freaking float. Um, it was a reverse split. Pumpers were all over it. The demand was insane. Sometimes you just don't know, but you put that, that concoction together, man, and it just does it. But here's the thing. This is overthinking. And I promise you, Lynn, I'm not trying to like um, beat you up or anything or, or be hard on you. This is overthinking, my man. Don't worry why it's doing it. Just know if it's doing it, you don't play it or you set your stops and respect your stops. If CEI is doing what it does, you get your entry that you think is the best entry and you protect yourself. This, trying to figure out all the reasons why it's up and closed, but this will just drive you crazy. I tried to do this for the first five years. The trend is your friend. Thank you, Edson. This is everything, bro. The price action, the trend is your friend. Val knew he was breaking every single rule yesterday, and I was, and um, had he been on the phone with me, I would have been like, Val, you've got to stop this right now. Trading, trading in a zombie hour, a stock that had not broken down all day. Not only did it not break down, it had a shit ton of volume. High or low, making new high after new high. These are all things that can make a runner in the end of day, a black swan, um, not give up. And here's the thing. To more specifically answer your question, though, Landis, the reason why something like Bizzle, um, you know, probably kind of just, died out is I, I think the float's bigger i didn't pay attention to Bizzle at all today but i think the who can confirm the float i think the float's bigger than uh than what that recent reverse split cei was yesterday and second um um second is the thing is not way over vwap making new highs after new high after new high um yeah the flow rotation yesterday was insane um today Bizzle, you know it's just dude it's 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 rain it's channel trading between like eight dollars and 650 all day that's not an ultra strong stock that everybody's like, oh my God, that wants to buy. And I mean, even new, some new traders know patterns. So, you know, the demand is there for Bizzle. The demand is there. It's already up a lot. It's already up right now. It's up 220% as we talk still. And it was up more than that earlier. So the whole point is, um, you know, is the pattern there, bro? Is, is the pattern there? But that is a way to see is, is, you know, a stock making new high after new high after new high with no sign to weakness. This kind of had signs of weakness. It was already up in pre-market. It broke out. It broke back down. It broke out above those highs. It broke back down above, above and below pre-market highs based around BWAP. Um, and then started doing lower high after lower high. And then boom, um, it finally did the the candle BWAP slam. And then boosh, canoe, it's done, right?
Yeah, man, of course, man. Like, look, dude, this is why we do, you know, calls weekly and stuff. Like, we want you guys to get good, man. We, you're not a number at MIC, man. Landis, I want you to get good, man. You know, I, I want – but, Sam, I want you to understand day two is as best you can. I, I want everybody to do good. Um, oh, uh, Clement, uh, Co. I'm sorry, but could you elaborate on a red to green line fail and reject? Yeah, so, you know, two ways. Two ways, Clement. So, check this out. So, look at Yuma. Um, if you guys can look at Yuma, I'm, I'm sorry I can't pull it up during this webinar. I wish I could, but um, Yuma's red to green line was at 388. It's already backsides in. I know that it's a long journey from open at 320 or whatever that open is. I'm, I'm looking at a very zoomed in chart, but or a zoomed out chart. Um, I think, what did it open up? Around like 320, 330. Up to 380 is a long journey. And that's red to green. And red to green or green to red, that line is a very key pivotal level and a psychological price target for people to either get even, get out, to you know, start long the stock, or, or if it can't make it through, it's, it's a total short. It's a really key level. So what I do, if it's a long journey into red to green, I'm scaling into red to green. I don't even need to fail first. If it is a short journey, and it, you know, say Yuma opens up at 375 and 388 is red to green, well then I want it to hit 388 and then reject off of it and then I'm hitting the next pop. So it just depends comfort zone, brother. Are you waiting for confirmation versus anticipation all the time? And that's what's super key. Man, Bizzle, man, fucking A. I did not expect Bizzle to break down like this. This is awesome. I would have just, dude, even if I did short this, I probably would have just covered like a little bitch on uh, the uh, VWAP death candle and then the next slam. That was, because that was a sick slam. That was like a dollar slam. But dude, this thing is, this thing could really break down if this continues up. Um, FX Edge talks. Thanks a lot for clarifying my repetitive questions. Um, yeah, dude, no problem. Anytime, man. It fills in the missing gaps and I see things for the PDF too. Of course, bro, of course. Check this out. I'm working on, oh, this is for new traders. So guys, check this. I am working on a new PDF right now. Uh, where are you? So I'm working on something right now that is all about uh, how to log in, what to watch in order, uh, what to pay attention to, um, our strategies, our curriculum, our scheduling lines, what are lines, uh, how to put the pivot lines on your charts. I'm working on a re how to contact and get a tab partner. I'm working on a real new member PDF that when this is done in the next couple of days, I will absolutely throw your guys away. And uh, it'll just be really good for you to learn and stuff. And check this out. Um, I have a chat rules. So check this. I'll say, oh, I already have the PDF. Once I'm going to, I'll drop this in chat right now so you guys can uh, download this. So check this, guys. Uh, these are my chat rules for shorting. T. Bradley, 90 shorting 101 rules. You guys have access to this. So I just posted the PDF right here. Guys, download this for anyone that's new. After six years, this is these are some of the best lessons I've learned for how to stay safe on the short side. These are all the things I don't touch and or I'm very careful on touching. Um, you know. So take a look at that when you have time. Download it. It's all good. We got you guys, man. We're going to keep you safe. You just got to listen to us. <laughs> well, guys, I, I, think, uh, I think that's – yeah, man. Anytime, bro. Of course. Thanks, brother. Thanks for showing up. Guys, what do you think? Uh, did we answer the questions? Because I'm pretty talked out. <laughs> I can give it a couple more minutes if you guys do have some last minute questions. <laughs> thanks, buddy. Anytime, man. But Sam, thanks, buddy. I, I do this every week, man. So if you guys want to come back to the Q&A next week, feel free, man. Wednesdays, 2 p.m. I, I do these every week, man. And Q&As always turn out to be different. That's why I started recording them, just so people can learn, man. And people can uh, uh, just get a little insight, I hope. <laughs> thanks, buddy. Thanks, Cody. Legit, so so glad I got back in MIC. I left because of cost, but uh, couldn't stay away, especially because I got rid of my. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, Landis, of course, man. Look, we recommend. Look, dude, get your life right first, man, and then come here. You know, you don't have to just be in MIC uh, while you're, you know, maybe unable to pay your phone bill or something. I don't know, whatever. You know, yeah, take care of your life first. We will always be here, brother, and and we got your back when you're here. So thanks for coming back, man. That's great to hear. I'm so glad you came back. Uh, Jay, thank you, buddy. 
appreciate it, man. Thanks for showing up, guys. Oh, you know it is, Ed. So you know it's Smoothie Time, buddy. <laughs> Jody, thank you. Yeah, me and Bao had the, had the most fun IG Live today, man. We had a ton of fun. Just a glimpse into our lives, a glimpse into our thought process and just every that's why I see that's why I'm so talked out. I was like, damn, why am I so tired today? Because me and Bao talked for a freaking hour too. <laughs> Dude, I don't want to talk to a single soul after this today, except maybe some Tinder chicks. I'm just like, I'm talked out, man. I'll have to learn how to use Morse code or be like um like an X-Men dude and just freaking telepathically just get people say because I'm talked out. <laughs> Guys, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wrap it up right now, but if you have any questions, my PMs are always open and I, my email is always open. So Tosh at my investing club dot com for anything. Uh I have an email guy that helps me with this. If I don't see it, he will. Um, and he will get back to you as soon as possible. So guys, yeah, yeah, we're gonna, uh, I think Alex is working on that right now, buddy. Jay, thank you guys so much. Thanks for showing up. I love you all, you guys, man. I'm so happy that you're a part of MIC and uh, let's, keep, let's keep kicking ass together, man. Great job, guys. See you, buddy. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by tbradley90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T-O-S-H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.